All right, I think we are recording, John. Yes, we're on. We are on. We are on. Now, uh, we are wary of video fatigue, but this video is not going to go for long. And it's really just, again, I'll reiterate what I said last week. Uh, this model of professional learning is providing us with some flexibility as to when and where uh, we participate in, in whole school and team-based professional learning. Anyway, um, just to set up today, today's all about, I guess, the flavour for term four um, has, we had a really fun day on Friday. Obviously, our flavour is fun, but it's also about student agency. Our school improvement team is doing an inquiry on student agency, and so is all of our team. So um, today's professional learning is very much aligned with all of that work. And we are going to be able to use some of the um, some of our experiences today in our own collaborative inquiries. So I like the fact that they are connected. Have I missed anything there, John? Uh, no, obviously you can see the Bloom Zoonomy screen on there. That's sort of going to be what we'll be using today. And that's found on the Wasabi Community Learning app, I think, just by searching that up. So Yeah. So we'll, we're going to do the video today, but there is um, really, it's not a long video. It's going to just be mainly a task that we're all going to create. Uh, and you can do it in teams, you can do it independently. Um, but we're hopefully that it's valuable because what it'll, we're actually going to be using Blooms to be able to think about different ways that students can demonstrate their learning. So I guess I'm going to flick to, oh yeah, there's our learning intention. To use Blooms to personalise learning. I guess that's what um, we know that Blooms allows us to do is to personalise the learning, um, bringing those personal perspectives in from our students. Um, we're going to look at an example of how you can do that today. And it's only one example of how you can get it going in your classroom. So um, it might be useful or you might have your own way. All right. First things first, we are going to stop straight away. We did, um, we started our experiment of using Google Chat for to share when it comes to professional learning. We started last week. We're going to continue that. So you will see a new thread and I've just changed the name of the, uh, the Google Chat room to professional learning at Boucher so that you know that's the room you go to whenever we want um, some collaboration about professional learning. So we're going to make sure you go back to the professional learning chat room and all we need to do is answer this question this week. What do you want to learn about? So that could be anything and everything. There are no real rules, um, but just want you to know that once you've written uh, about what you want to learn about, we're going to be taking that and uh, developing it and thinking about balloons with it. So I'm going to stop talking and once you give you enough time to press the pause button on your device and then we'll jump into it. So you should see lots of things coming on the chat and you can reply to others and things like that as well. Okay. So you should have written your whatever you want to learn about. Uh, we were chatting before. Some of you might want to learn about um, teaching and learning focused things. So something to do with your work or it could be something personal as well. Like I said, there are no real rules. Um, we're just going to see how Blooms can help us learn at a deeper level. Okay, so um, I guess this template here is from the Zoonomy uh, document that you can get on the Wabasabi um, platform. And that's something we're going to be using today just to help us. Um, I'm going to be using this to help um, me figure out how I'm going to show my learning for my passion topic or the topic I like to learn about is space. Um, so I've chosen to learn about space and I'm going to be using Blooms to show how I can show my learning at each, um, I guess, level of blooms yeah and the other thing i know many of you have already had a look at this but the other thing we're going to be introducing everyone today is something that in the wabasabi team they they call the zoonomy um rather than a taxonomy because what they have um very uh, creatively done is attached animals to each of the levels of bloom so i guess one of the reasons for this is to provide that mnemonic device, uh, that remembering tool, something for students and us to visualise when we're thinking about the levels of blooms. And all, each of the animals has been chosen strategically uh, to link in with a, um, 
a particular level of blooms. If I think about kids having agency over their own learning, um, having a really good knowledge of the levels of blooms and the different ways that they can demonstrate it, I think if all of our kids knew the levels of blooms, that would be a really good thing in terms of developing student agency. I guess the animals help them to do that. So we're gonna introduce you to those as well today. And the first one, Joey. Elephant. So it's a little um, bit like you there. Big Joey. nose. Yeah. Big long <laughs> nose. Um, yeah, so <laughs> thanks for that, mate. Um, right. they've, used, they've got the elephant as um, a symbol to help us remember the remembering stage of blooms. Um, and we know that elephants have big heads, they have big brains. And I think there's a lot of stories where elephants have remembered um, things their whole life. They might have remembered the, um, the circus person who harmed them as a baby, remembered all their, all their whole life, and they've encountered them again in their later life and remember the hard, um, how hard done by they were. So we know that um, elephants are usually symbols for um, good memories, and that's how we can allow our kids to remember this stage of bloom. So you can see a little bit of a, um, I guess a, bit of a story there you can share with your kids to help um, them understand it. Um, but again, these are found in the Bloom Zoonomy. So yeah, I don't want we'll, to go over. We'll attach to the email as well. Yeah. So, and I guess it's um, this poster here is also um, a really good one, I thought. Just some different tasks that we can be doing to remember things. And I'm sure this is not supposed to be a comprehensive list or by any stretch is, the, is everything that you can be doing, but it just does give us an idea, points us in the right direction. Just some examples, yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, there's some, obviously you can see those, make a note. Oh, Gary's moved oh, on. Sorry. A um, lot of just sort of listing down things, I would say, for the remembering stage, lots of jotting things down. Um, they're not um, too complex for those ones. I had to summarise them all. That's the remembering stage. The next one that's fairly linked to the remembering stage is just another level up is the understanding. And they've got a turtle um, for the symbol there. Gary, do you want to explain why they've got the turtle there? Yeah, well, I'll just read from the um, script, but turtles are the animal kingdom natural observer and knows many things. I think about actually, um, there was a video that we've included in the link and they used, it made me think of um, Finding Nemo. I think the turtles were quite cool, but if you remember, it, the turtle actually gave Nemo Oh, not Nemo, who was looking? Dory. Gave Dory a lot of advice as to how to navigate um, the big wide ocean. Um, so obviously they've got a, a symbol for understanding um, and that's why they've used turtle for this one. Um, here are some of the things that you can do at an understanding level. Now, these posters were created by Wabasabi and some of them we, had, we did have question marks about, which we can um, talk about. But when you're reading these, I guess you can also be a critical uh, viewer, a critical reader, and um, just make sure that some of the things do line up with what you think understanding is all about. And they're just suggestions. They, doesn't, they don't mean that they are the only examples that you could um, have for the understanding stage. They're just examples to show what that would look like potentially. Yeah. Okay, so thinking about my topic, I chose space. So if I was to show um, some learning um, around my topic um, for the first two stages of blooms, for the remembering understanding, um, for the remembering, I think I could maybe make a list. So Gary, I think if you press space bar there, my little um, success criteria for that will come up. So I think for remembering, so draw a picture of the solar system. Um, that's something that I could show that I'm at the remembering stage for my um, chosen topic. If you press space bar again, Gaz, it'll bring up my understanding. So with my picture, I guess I could, to show that I understand, I could label the different things in the solar system and explain their features to show that I am understanding um, parts of the solar system. So they're the two things that I could show to, to be successful with my chosen topic. So yep. Thank you for that worked example. The next one is um, applying. I don't want to read and spend too much time on these because we've got all the resources. You got Everyone can read them and try and understand them. You can talk about them in your team, but we're just trying to, again, introduce each animal perhaps and each level. So uh, ravens, 
uh, the bird for applying. And we had a chat this morning about uh, not just ravens, but how birds in general are very good at applying um, things that are around them. I think, did you have the, I had the story of the bird starting fire. I saw a documentary where um, when a bushfire start, all the animals and small rodents and things like that would be, um, would have to escape the flames and the birds, the ravens and eagles would take advantage of that and swoop in for an easy dinner. But we actually saw the documentary where uh, birds were taking, once a bushfire had reached its limits and was started to peter out, they would take a stick with a um, with an ember on it and drop it into an unburnt area to, again, flush out more um, more animals, effectively starting another bushfire, which I thought was incredible. <laughs> I think there was um, lots of examples of birds using their environment. Here's some examples um, for the appliance stage. And this is probably where Gary and I had a bit of a chat about some of them not really making sense for the appliance stage. Um, so we were questioning some. So to watch the video and listen to the podcast, we were kind of questioning how that might look at the applying stage and whether it actually is applying, but I guess um, that's okay to question things. So there are some examples of how um, we or students could show that they are at the applying stage. So mm, That's right. I do, we'll say that again. I, I do have questions of how listening to a podcast is, uh, is applying something, but if any of, anyone has ideas and can help me out, please let me know. All right. So, um, we know that John's already done remembering and understanding. What about so, applying? You want to learn about space? I think um, to apply my new knowledge, maybe I could give people a tour of the night sky. Um, hopefully by um, remembering and understanding, I might gain a knowledge of where things are in the sky, where the planets are, and maybe I could take a tour, take a, some friends on a tour of the night sky and, and apply my new knowledge. Pretty cool. We're going to keep going, analyzing. The octopus. Everyone's seen the octopus in the um, can, in the fish tank choosing who's going to win the Super Bowl or the whatever sporting event it is. Yeah, absolutely. I saw the My Octopus Teacher, pretty interesting um, documentary that's on Netflix, and um, it sort of makes me curious about octopus. I think there, there's more to them than we think. Lots of legs. They do have lots of legs. Lots of legs. Again, there's a list of um, some examples of how we could potentially show with the analyzing stuff. You still with me, John? I'm hoping John's frozen and not, um, it's not me because then the recording will be in jeopardy. Um, I'm just gonna flick through. So for the next part, we had study the different characteristics of planets. So I guess, and it could be in the form of a Venn diagram or um, other sorts of things, how, how, um, how, how planets are composed, how far away they are, how big they are. Um, so it really is studying the characteristics of different planets. Uh, I've just got a message from John. His computer went flat. So that's good. He's left me high and dry. Um, next one is the owl, evaluating owl. Owls are very wise. Um, you can read the description on um, what, why an owl is the evaluating. But you can see here, it's what are the strengths and weaknesses? So there's a good question to frame up whenever we're thinking about the evaluating stage is what are the strengths and weaknesses of something? Again, here's some what you can do to evaluate, make a comparison, you can have a debate, you can be conducting reviews, um, lots of things. We do a lot of evaluating when we are persuading someone or working with persuasive writing, uh, perform an experiment, so science, um, maybe even when we're estimating in mathematics, uh, lots of those things are at the evaluate stage. So you can see here, at the evaluating stage, John has put review each planet with the idea of selecting the best candidate for Earth 2.0. Um, so there is a lot of, I guess, background knowledge and information that I would need if I was going to do those things.
Okay, so he's obviously put animations on that previous one, but not the evaluating one. All right, and then the final stage is the creating stage. It's um, signified by a butterfly because obviously butterflies start off as a caterpillar and then they grow into something, transform into something completely new that did not exist before. I think if I go back to the definition, uh, what could I make or build? Um, but I think what we really need to think about here is the originality and uniqueness. So making sure that the new creation is in fact um, new and original. There's some things there that you can do. And John's it worked example, he has got create a new planet that has the best versions of all the planets. So that would be a cool thing. Um, the latest planet in our solar system um, and all the things. And if I think about that create level, it really, there are so, there's so much information that we're going to need to be able to do that. And that's where um, all these other things come into it. Okay. All right, I might get John for this one and just bear with me. I want you to read this slide while I go get him. All right, so I'm going to talk about this slide and this was um, this was uh, what John had completed with the U3 class last week. And as you can see, it's just, he's got a what I want to learn about chart. So every single, um, just like we did at the start of this session, we put in our Google chat the things that we want to learn about. Um, the year three kids did the same thing here and you can see the different topics. What he did after that was then introduced, well, the question was, okay, that's fine. You want to learn about uh, or pandas, but what are you going to do to demonstrate your learning about pandas and maybe have that conversation? What is it about pandas that you want to learn? Um, and that's where we took from this initial conversation, which really was just about students' curiosity and their interests, really bringing in their agency. Uh, we then wanted to um, bring in Blooms and, and I guess to develop our students' ability uh, and knowledge of different ways that they can demonstrate their learning. And here's some of the things that they come up with. Um, It's hard for me to talk about. So um, this looks like something about dogs. I don't know whose it was. John included the photo, then his computer died, so I'm stranded. Um, but this one was obviously about dogs. Uh, Idilla, I've got a name on this one. So this was all about plants. And you can see that in one short lesson, John's just walked in behind me. So. He's back without a laptop. <laughs> um, so you can see Idilla's talking about plants and she's obviously, and feel free to jump in if you like if I'm saying the wrong thing. Um, she's obviously just been able to, in one short lesson, been able to think about different ways that she can show her learning um, about whatever, about her interests. That was without any, I guess, not without any support, without um, too much support that she was able to come up with those. Each of these examples have been able to come up in, come up with them independently. Yeah. Tegan here. So Tegan, I think, um, would be one of our 
uh, probably lower. Might need some support. Yeah, might need a bit more support. But then even there, um, did she need much support to create this? No, I, well, I didn't check in with her at all apart from when I was modeling. So you can see that she's actually really lent on the slides. Yeah. Um, which I guess that's okay for the, her first attempt. It's yeah. getting her to understand the different levels of balloons. So as the kids were working on this, did you have those slides with the different things they can yep. do so they could go yep. there and choose them? And they yeah. had the time, you know, they were sharing with each other their examples. So they were working collaboratively with each other. Yeah. So what was her topic? Do you remember her topic? Horses. Horses, that's right. Okay. So I can see even in evaluating that she's really used lent on that slide, as you said, review a movie or book because that was language issues. Yep. That's okay. Um, in the conference, you'd like to talk to her and, and maybe flesh out what she actually means by review a movie. Yeah. So I think she's just copied it off the slide. Yeah. All right. So that was, um, we just went through a couple of uh, photos that John just ran away and took before. Um, is there anything else you wanted to share about that experience with doing it with the kids? Uh, I think um, it was really good to actually just have a go of doing it. And, and the kids were really able to work independently, I guess, with something they've never even done before. Um, I think by letting them choose their, their passion topic, um, they were really, they, they bought into that process and they really enjoyed the fact that they could show their learning in different ways um, if they were given the choice to learn about what they wanted to learn about. Awesome. All right, so this last one. Now we, basically the task of today um, hopefully we've already put out what we want to learn about on the on the chat because I think that's kind of cool to see everyone's interests as a group of staff and like I said it could have been about teaching and learning it could be about anything uh, at all um, the real purpose behind it is now to try and have a have a go at filling out what are some of the ways that you could demonstrate your learning about your topic okay and if I go back to the theory of blooms and how blooms actually started as a, um, as a, I guess, a pedagogical approach or even a theory of how humans learn, um, it really is that if we are able to do all of those levels, that our learning is much, much deeper. So if we want to learn about horses, if I really want to learn a lot about horses, if I make sure I go through all those different levels and I'm actually creating something brand new with it, um, as an ultimate goal, then I guess I know that my level is going to be at a much deeper, in a deeper place. And valuing also all parts of learning. Sometimes we might brush over the making lists of things or making diagrams, but it's allowing us to really appreciate those parts of learning as well, instead of just skipping straight to the creating. Mm. We're showing kids that each part is valuable um, in the process of learning. Mm. Now, I know there is, it seems like it could be a little bit of repetition because we did do a very similar, um, a very similar thing with achievement standards as a part of the learning intentions masterclass. But I, I think that there is value in seeing how we can adapt it and use it for a class just based on whatever our interests are. So, and also I guess by doing it again and doing it with a different lens, uh, we, our understanding is only going to become more solid. So what we want in the email that was sent out or on the Google chat, uh, not only you've watched this video, you've clicked on the link, but there is also a link to a Google Slides presentation. Um, there is 40 identical slides in that presentation. So your task for today's um, session is to simply pop your name and your chosen topic at the top of the slide and have a go at filling out what different ways you could show your learning against each of the levels of blooms. Um, use the resources that are in there. We've got those posters um, with some of the with ideas for different activities. Come up with your own. Um, but that slideshow, like I said, you just need to make your find your own empty page. So first in best dress with that. Um, but there's 40 slides, so there should be enough for everyone. Uh, find your own, pop your name there, and then it is important to be able to flick back and look at each other's work, okay, because that's the power of it, is not just doing our own thing, but being able to learn from each other and share our practice. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully the video component didn't go for too long and we've left you with enough time to have a crack. Have a go with kids. Get cracking with your kids. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Ciao.
Ja, ne. <lacht> ich 